Good afternoon, this is Andrew Charnetsky, and today I'm going to show you some of the various lighting features of Pure Light. So I have this simple little test scene right here. It has three point lights. If I start bake, I'm just going to show you what this lighting is going to look like. So you can see three simple spot point lights here. They're all one light object, so in 3D Max I selected uh, three point lights and exported them as one ASC file. And the same settings apply to all of them. Now, so this is just the, the basic settings. It actually works pretty good. You get some nice indirect lighting in there. But uh, we want to first of all, for example, change like the inner and outer angle. So the outer angle is kind of the edge of our fall off here. So let's try maybe 70 degrees. And the inner angle, that's the angle at which it's 100%. So I'm going to make that smaller. I'm also going to, uh, in this case, maybe change our power to one and a half, a little bit brighter. Start big, just redo the lighting here. You can see already it's a little bit brighter. And then we get a much softer fall off here. That's because we have that 20 degree brightness in the inside and then it softly goes up to something further. So if I have a group of lights here, uh, let's say that I have one light over top of a door where it's a little bit too bright or such, I can also uh, split up a group like this. So using control I can select a different light there. I'm going to go lighting, split light group and save the difference. Uh, I'm using modules here, we'll get into modules in the next, uh, uh, next tutorial video. Anyways I'm going to save the new light. It's a different ASC file and so you can see the original settings applied to this one. We can now do something different to this light. For example, we can change the color, and make it orange. So in general, the way we tend to work is to uh, have a whole number of lights as instances in something like 3D Max. Uh, use groups to kind of keep lights together and then export light groups. For example, all the incandescent light bulbs of a certain intensity, export as one object and then break it down further as necessary. We can also uh, set up a few extra special features in here. For example, well, we've already looked at color in this, but projection texture. So in this case, I can look at uh, a couple directories here. Light demo textures. I'm going to use uh, red blue gradient. I'm just going to show you what this looks like. So it's just a simple gradient here. I'm going to use that as a projection texture. And now when I bake, it's going to cast that as if it were like a film projector. And so we get that nice red blue gradient. You can see how that affects all the indirect light in the scene. This is really good for kind of subtle effects like I used in the den scene, or you can uh, cast some interesting colors like this. To remove that, I'm just going to go back, clear this. Yes, there we go. So looking at other lights here, I have a few different modules set up. So I have, uh, there's our interior spot, interior omni, so I have the, the same geometry with a simple omni light. So this is the very same idea, except as an omni light basically just casts light in an equal sphere all around it. So you can see it's just glowing on this back side. That's our light at a basic power of 2. Now looking at the settings, we could say change the icon size. So if I made that 5, that's going to be a pretty large icon. Or I could even make that larger, maybe 25. You can see where this would be really useful for, say, uh, not necessarily a sun, but something outside the regular scene that you might want to click on, some sort of just general fill light. We can also change the, the power. We can make it extra bright. So this is five times more powerful. So you can see this area here is almost completely bleached white. Still a bit of a gradient fall off in the back. Or I can drop it down to something really small. So just for scale, this uh, box is about six feet by six feet by six feet. And uh, so we have it tuned, so about a uh, lighting value of one in a scene about this size is, is give or take uh, somewhere around your average brightness. So usually values of one, two, three for something this size is pretty good. Shouldn't necessarily need values of like 0.006 or 0.1000 exactly. Anyways, there we have our point light. Uh, changing modules here, we can go to uh, interior panels, good one. So this is the same idea, except we have, you can see here glowing, a object light on the wall. So this is just a mesh with the texture making it red, uh, blue, yellow, or blue, red, yellow. So we bake this here, you get the colors, you can see that this is a little bit bright. It's because uh, object lights are based on their area, so there's a lot of surface area here. So we're going to drop that power to say 0.1, and we're going to continue to use the texture. So you can see this is now getting somewhere in the range of something a little more, uh, more usual. And see the indirect spots over here that are getting more red and etc. So I can, uh, for example, if I were to remove this, uh, move this texture, it'll now all default to white. That white so lights up just like you'd expect. Or we can change the color right here. So just like a regular light, we could say make this green, and it's going to bake all green. We can get. Uh, if you look the, into the documentation, there's some explanation for, say, the samples value. This is now getting into a bit of an advanced feature, but in general, if you don't know, it's best to probably leave the default settings, change the color, change the texture, change the power. Moving on to the next one here, we have uh, so the same little mesh, except I've removed the walls here, and we have a sunlight, so that's just a directional light. 
we can't click on it there's no icon but we can go from the uh, uh, lighting or through the selection windows here actually it would be through the lights window it'll show all the lights currently or through the selections window we can filter to light bring up our sun see now that we have it selected it's drawing all the rays of what it would look like so with our sun selected you can see the properties at the top pressing f4 will bring up uh, our properties window you can change the power in this case to say two or three let's try something fairly bright here start fake so we have bright sunlight coming in as so you can see that direct light is casting really nice form on the floor and then that's basically casting indirect light into the back of the space just like uh, the other lights here we can change the color so if we wanted to have say some sort of moonlight we could have something a little bit blue dark maybe 0.5 Basically, just change the color and intensity, and all the indirect light will uh, bake to match. Note that uh, despite the fact that I have the sunlight here, we're also getting direct light in through the background. You can change that under the lighting, change background colors. So right now, it's just solid gray. If we made that, say, blood red, and a fairly bright one, even though I have this dim moonlight, we're going to get this really strong red light coming in, basically from the uh, the background. If we turn the background light off entirely, so just black or power excuse me, power of zero. So this is now only the lighting generated by our sun. So you can see it's a lot darker. That's because of how much light we had spilling in. So if you're gonna set up, say, a nighttime scene, it's important to balance both the lights as well as uh, your background color. Moving on to another module here. Uh, here I have the exact same scene as before, except I have uh, a stained glass window. So I have our sun. Let's go back to a nice bright daylight sun. Let's say power of three. Let's change our background color to uh, uh, something maybe a little bit brighter, a bit of a blue twint or tinge tends to be pretty good. So now, if I were to bake this scene, right now it should be black except for a bit of a light bleed there. That light bleed is just because the outside edge of this is exposed to lighting. What I need to do is I need to open the properties for this mesh. You can see there's a lot more properties than on just basic lights. Under materials, we have the list of all the submaterials on the object. Right now there's just one. So we have the color. This is, for example, the color of the wall. And we also have the texture and then the transparency. So the transparency by default is opaque. We're going to set that to color. And so that's going to basically use the color of this surface like a stained glass window. As you can see already, we have the sunlight come through. It's taking its casting. It's projecting through that texture. Now the background is very noisy here, but as we let it bake, it's going to get more and more result. So you can get some really impressive lighting effects through uh, these sort of options. We can also change the texture used on the background here. Same place under materials. So I'm going to change that to something a little less uh, pretty. Let's go to chain link. Press apply so you can see we're now a different material. And that material, whatever's displayed in pure light, will affect the lighting. So for example, if I set this floor to bright red, it would affect the bounce light in the room. Anyways, now that I have the chain link set, I'm going to change it to alpha transparency. Now when I bake, the sunlight's basically going to be masked off by the spaces in this texture. So you can see we just have being masked off by that black and white mask. We won't get any color transparency fading through. Moving on to another module here, uh, let's go to interior neon. So this is the same space as before, except I have a uh, fairly complicated mesh for an object light. If I start bake, you can see it'll work pretty much as expected. Right now, because of the amount of surface area for it, it's fairly bright for the scene. So let's drop that. So you can see it's going to cast light areas where it's closer to surfaces and such are going to be better. You can see my mesh here isn't uh, quite perfect on the end. I kind of slapped this together early, so I'm going to just change our background color. I'm going to just drop it to, uh, uh, to zero. So basically, we shouldn't have to worry about light bleeding into the scene because there's really no background light on coming in. It's a good solution for a case where uh, your model might not necessarily be airtight. But anyways, you can see how we're getting some really nice subtle lighting. It'll all resolve nice and smooth here as, uh, as we let it bake. Looking at another example, so here we have a, uh, just another mesh with uh, object light. You can see you can get some really interesting lighting based on different geometry for object lights. Just remove the texture. Hope you also get a sense of how the, uh, the iterative workflow goes. Like as you see, I stop and start quite frequently, but uh, this is good. It lets me get the exact idea of the light that I want to see in the scene. Looking at something a little bit different here, if we go to an exterior, so now this is the same scene or same sort of object, but uh, uh, I guess convex, you could say. I'm going to change our background color, so give it a little more power here, maybe power of uh, 
And the scene has a sunlight to it, so let's change that. Let's make that a bit brighter. This just gives you an idea here of uh, how the sunlight angles, they all come at this consistent direction. So you're going to get our nice natural sunlight shadows. And then I have this wall here, and I just wanted to show how the sunlight bouncing off this wall is going to be fairly bright, like the back side of this box. This is also a good example of, uh, based on your scene, you can control your light map resolution differently. For example, this big background piece, though it has some interesting shadows here, perhaps doesn't have to be as high res, or certainly these surfaces here don't necessarily have to be. One interesting bit of lighting I always like when you have these uh, uh, corners where you have sunlight balance and you end up getting these nice little bright highlights. Very natural, subtle bit of lighting there. And I think that's pretty much uh, this presentation. So ultimately between spotlights, point lights, uh, directional lights and object lights, you should be able to simulate pretty much any piece of lighting you can possibly imagine. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. Thank you.